Okay. All right, welcome everyone. I just want to say thank you for joining us today on this, I guess, depending on where you at, I have a sunny, windy day in Madison. So um, I hope you have some sunshine wherever you all are. Uh, my name is Karen Spader and I'll be leading our session today, although I hardly do a whole lot of leading and more, uh, pr more, more prompting. Uh, I've got some guiding questions for you today and lots of opportunity to discuss. Um, so if you've been with us before, you'll know that our, uh, our sessions are intended to be responsive to the needs of whoever's attending them. Um, we kind of are trying to make adjustments based on the conversations that we have. And so today for our kind of overall topic, we've got better, better asynchronous collaborations in our remote learning environments. Um, I know I recognize a lot of your names, but just to make sure, if I could get your hand, get you to raise your hand if you are comfortable with using Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. You know how to find the chat and all those things. And of course, know how to raise your hand if <clears throat> you do indeed raise your hand. All right, so I do, I am aware that Dustin is far, far away and perhaps does have complications with all of this. So thanks everyone, you can lower your hand now. And then I'll just say that, Dustin, if you are hearing us, if you can't see the chat, that purple tab in the bottom right uh, will open that panel and you'll be able to participate in the chat if that's easier for you. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and push forward here. We won't need to go over the, the tools very much. Uh, so our kind of approach today is just kind of taking a look back and then address getting you an opportunity to share what your concerns, your questions, your needs are, um, and then really it's a collaborative effort to address those needs and point you toward resources that we've got put together for you in our activity sheet, and that is access accessible. Uh, someone put it in the chat and it's also accessible through the homepage of our remote readiness canvas course um, and so we'll ask you to kind of interact there and you'll have that, that platform um, for your for resource we're sharing with you um, so real briefly if you didn't come last week our top tips were really about in terms of asynchronous collaboration uh, this intentional effort to elicit connections and interactions among students during the remote experience, uh, awarding points for their participation in interactions, making sure that you establish your clear ex expectations, uh, giving groups an actual space where they have instructor level power using Canvas groups, um, and then just encouraging a variety of activities that are offered to your students. So those were the things we talked about last week. Um, and this week, as I mentioned, what we're really intending to do is to get you to start discussing as it relates to collaboration, social learning in your uh, online or remote in learning environment, uh, what are ways that social learning experiences can be beneficial for your students. So what I mean, I, I mean to put social there quite intentionally because I think of social learning experiences being very broad, right? So they could be really formal in terms of an assigned group project or formal Canvas discussion forum. Uh, they could be really informal too, right? Just this opportunity to share ideas. Um, we do this in our face-to-face -face courses in a kind of quasi-informal way by just asking students questions and just having them break off into small groups or pairs to talk about that and we come back together. So it's not formal in the sense that we uh, have it really structured and clear expectations and grade it. Um, it's more of an informal opportunity to share and navigate the information together. So I present social learning experiences intentionally to kind of keep your mind open. But we're going to use the great, cam uh, not Canvas, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra breakout groups uh, for about 10 minutes to give you an opportunity in smaller groups to discuss in your own courses, how might social learning experiences be beneficial for your students? Um, especially as we look toward these last four or so weeks that we have in the semester and we're leading up to those final exam, final projects. Take some time in your breakout group to talk about ways that fostering that social learning could be beneficial 
for your students as you wrap up the semester. So we're, I'm going to create breakout groups and you'll get thrown into a breakout group. Um, when you're in this group, make sure that you turn on your mic. Feel free if you, if you have the ability, the bandwidth at home to use your video, you can turn that on as well. If you experience some issue of lag, turning that video off can often be helpful. Um, and there is the raise, their hand, raise your hand there. I'll leave it up to individual groups to kind of uh, decide participation norms. Um, but after I start breakout groups, I will share the slide with you so you will have this information available to you. So you'll see that in a few moments. We'll also have a moderator in each of the rooms, but we'll plan on spending 10 minutes. Um, last time I tried this, the timer was no longer, was not working. I do not see the timer. So um, I'll ask the moderators to kind of keep your eye on and we'll say we will come back at 10.22. Any questions before we break out? You're also welcome to ask your moderator in your room. Okay, so I'm gonna create three rooms. I'm going to randomly assign everyone, and just suddenly you will pop out and, and you'll come into the room. Okay, here we go, three, two, one. Looks like I mean, moderators, you're going to have to move. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it would throw you all in there. People who are participants are actually instructional de de designers like Kari and Regina. You put two people in a room that really shouldn't go in a room. Um, Karen? I did it randomly, Karen. I know, but Kari and Regina aren't instructors. Well, maybe so that's we... a good thing. Maybe that will give them a good opportunity to talk as designers with each other. I'll join group one. I'll take group three. Karen, do you want to jump in there and see what's going on? With Kari? Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Group uh, group one. Yeah. yeah. Got to hit that update button. Yeah, I always forget to do that. And JT, Tom, you doing all right? Do you need uh, me to move you? I, I was trying I, to get into group three, but I, yeah, I, getting, I, I tried uh, to drag myself down, but the update button is grayed out for me. All right. Uh, Tom, what group you want to go to? A three, if you get, if you can put me there. Hello, Hazel, you're in here with me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, Hazel, I'm going to put you into a group, all right? Okay. JT, are you in the main room with me? I am, but I'm trying to get into a group. But same problem with Tom. It's I'm not allowed to click update. I'll go to three for you. And then Hazel, are you still with me? I am. There you go. Okay. 